technical up here with you with the inaugural Manitoba show. Now, if you blink, you might miss it, but we're here in beautiful Pilot Mound, Manitoba, home of the Buffaloes. The inaugural season for the female team, third season for the males team. We're going to talk to the coaching staff and the players. Come and join us on this unique opportunity here in southern Manitoba. Very good, buddy. All right. Theo Tutkaluk here with the Manitoba Show, talking about the uniqueness of small businesses and small community events here in Manitoba. And what better place to start than Pilot Mound with Mr. Rod Collins? Hi. How are you? Theo. Very good. He is head coach, general manager, jack of all trades. I mean, Rod Collins is the brainstem of this Pilot Mound Hockey Academy. Tell me how it first started for you and the vision you had for such a program here. You have all places, Pilot Mound, Manitoba. Well, I'm originally from here, of course, and uh, once I saw the facility we had here, the arena facility, and being involved in, in programs before, like Shattuck St. Mary's and Notre Dame, I thought this would be an ideal situation since there wasn't a male program in the province. And so uh, we started the process, and through my brothers and myself, and Originally, Fred Voser from the uh, International Hockey Academy, but we recently bought him out. But we started our program here, and uh, it's been very uh, worked very well since. How many years has the Hockey Academy been here in Pilot Mount? Well, this will be our third year with with the boys, and our first year with the girls. Right on. So obviously, the, with having the girls introduced now into Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, the strength and the vision that you see. How do you attract? more players to become student athletes here in Pilot Mount? Well obviously if you're successful as a team or teams you attract players but going forward the number of kids were moving into junior A hockey and eventually collegiate hockey which is our goal I think that's a, a big sales pitch and uh, also developing good citizens in our program and well-educated kids. Absolutely. So you mentioned earlier you were part of the Shattuck St. Mary's program, and I've had first-hand knowledge of both that and the Wilcox Saskatchewan group in Notre Dame. Tell me how the relationship is uh, between the Hockey Academy and the school that these student-athletes attend and how it works well in their uh, busy schedule. It works extremely well because we're a small high school. I mean, we've obviously added 40 students to it, but that only makes it 140. We have a very good working relationship with the teachers and the principal in our program uh, and the division board. So we are almost, I would say, close to what you call a private school in that sense. Being able to track grades, uh, do homework on the road, Google Classroom, emails with teachers, etc. So it's an extremely uh, good process we have with our school here. So with that being said, Rod, Help, help explain the daily life of a student athlete here in Pilot Mound. What would they see from a Monday to Friday schedule and then maybe go into a little bit of their traveling uh, and with the tournaments and the play that they have all over North America? Well, a typical day would be, uh, of course, we have our dorms right here close to the rink and our dining and area there as well lounge area but um, a typical day would be the breakfast at eight o'clock uh, if you had the early morning practice that week we alternate girls and boys so you'd have a 7 a.m practice till eight o'clock then breakfast then off to school at nine they come back here uh, if you had the early morning practice you come back here they'll do the workout if they have the afternoon practice they start at 2 40 on the ice and they follow that with the workout we do all our on ice and off ice activities right here. Uh, we have dinner, uh, we have a study hall, supervised study hall every night in our dorms or in the lounge area. And then we have the curfews and lights out and we have a full-time dorm parent on site all the time. So it's much the same as a private school in that sense. So we have that Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday daily life. Now when they travel, the boys were telling us that you know they play everywhere from as far as Penticton, BC, uh, Crater Lane, and Idaho. I mean, these tournaments they change locations each year, or how do you go about selecting the tournaments, or do you have a selection of tournaments? How does that work for the traveling? Well, we just finished last week in Alberta, Red Deer, Alberta, our scheduling meetings in AGM for the Canadian Sports School League, 
So we set out our schedule. Uh, we have a certain number of showcases and then we put in flex games. So we have a very good schedule set up for next year for both boys and girls. Plus we play in the North American uh, Prep League, which takes us to Blaine, Minnesota, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, our furthest trip in the Canadian Sports School League this year will be uh, Shawnigan on, on the island. So we'll fly to that trip, of course. But uh, it is fairly strenuous on the, on the student athletes, these trips and the amount of study time that we provide for them on the trips and keeping their classes up. But we've been very successful. We won two awards, two academic awards in the Canadian Sports School League with our students, top students in the whole league. So we, uh, we make that a priority as much as our hockey. And that's a fantastic news because it creates a balance on the ice and off the ice and more off ice in terms of volunteering within the community. How do the students get involved in the community, in and around the sit town? What kind of aspects, what kind of activities do they get to? Well, we've had in the past, they've served at fund, fundraising dinners, that type of thing. Uh, we have, uh, they picked uh, carrots and corn, and et cetera, for the food bank, those types of activities. We, we've had them over to the coffee, United Church Coffee House, where they've entertained. We're setting up a, a visit to the uh, old folks' home to have them entertain there as well. So that's an important part of our program, is get them involved in the community. But these kids in this small town are very much part of the community with all the citizens. And they know them, they recognize them, uh, they're well-mannered here, uh, which we expect, of course. but. They're very much part of the community and, and pretty much everybody in town knows them first name. Yeah, that's the, what the gentlemen were saying. They walk around town, they walk in the supermarket to get a high five, they get a great game from the yeah. night before kind of thing, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Lastly, I want to discuss this. Only three years in, you know, the vision, the importance and the uniqueness of this program. Where do you see this program maybe two, four, five years down the road? Well, we definitely want to expand to another team, uh, probably a younger group in the boys at the boys level. Uh, we have plans for building our dormitory and dining area and everything. Uh, so we have that all in place. We know it's a, a great franchise. We've been told that by the leagues we can participate in. They trust our personnel here to, to follow up with our promises to expand and we intend to do that. I see it nothing but a, a, a real positive future for us. And our, our future comes not in how we manage our business, but the great student-athletes we produce. That's fantastic news, Rod. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy that we haven't touched on? I think we've pretty much covered everything, and I thank you for coming down visiting with us today to get a better exposure of our program. Uh, I know that every kid that's going to come in here is going to be cared for, and uh, part of a program not just for the dollar sense, but to develop great players and great athletes and uh, we hope to continue with that and I think moving forward you're going to see more and more of our players moving into either the, the junior or the collegiate level. That's great news Rod, thank you very much for joining us and if anything goes to show the, the number of years that created in Wilcox and Shattuck, the traditions of excellence will only continue here in Pilot Mount. Great idea, great program. I think it's fantastic to have in Southern Manitoba. Uh, we look forward to great things next year. Better records for both the males and the females teams, especially the females team. I know they had a pretty rough first year, but you know what? You got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, right. absolutely. Right on. Thank you, Theo. Thank you very much, Rod. Hi, I'm Cassandra Carrier with Fair and Fitness. We're located in Ildiche, Manitoba. We do everything from personal training, group training classes, yoga, and flexible steel. We also focus on young athletes. We do not only just the strength and conditioning, but the agility, power, rotational control and strength, and flexibility, stability, and mobility is always super important. You can find us at fairmfitness.ca and come check us out. Theo Tutkaluk here in Pilot Mound, Manitoba, talking a little bit of Pilot Mound Hockey Academy with Brad and the new coach of the female team, Harry. Welcome to the show. Harry. Tell me about what brought you to Pilot Mound and what you plan on doing with this wonderful female team come next year. 
Uh, well, what brought me here was uh, actually their head coach this past season, Ernie Sutherland. He was my assistant coach when I played out in Winkler for three years. Uh, he contacted me a couple times and made me aware, you know, they were possibly looking for a new coach. And, uh, you know, he's been a big influence in my career and, uh, you know, I would do anything for that guy. So when he presented me with the opportunity, I, you know, I hesitated at first, but, you know, with the long relationship I had with him, I knew I had to take it and it would be a good challenge for me. So you played in Winkler? Yes. As a flyer? Yes. Congratulations. Passing along that tradition here. And Brad, handy with the curling broom I saw on the page. Oh, but yeah. also the uh, hockey stick, I hope. Once a year. Yeah. Once a year, right? Just once a year now? Uh, curling. Curling, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Tell me your involvement with the Hockey Academy and uh, what you enjoyed seeing in the progression of this year, both the men's and the female team. Well, I guess I started when it was fresh, uh, when it was still a thought, and uh, so helped out trying to get kids in here uh, to make the program uh, be successful. And uh, I've got a lot, have a lot of years of coaching experience, uh, both probably 10 plus years with female players. So uh, I guess it was a good fit. Um, enjoy coaching females and uh, it is a different game, but with all the experience I've had, I've, you know, I was up for the challenge. It was, uh, it was a good year. Um, you know, we had some struggles at the start of the year trying to find enough kids. Uh, we got enough girls in and they improved so much more. I just absolutely love a program like this. I've coached in the AAA level, um, you know, just club hockey, uh, two days a week practices, and being on the ice every day. You can teach so much more. Just, just a dream job, actually. Uh, I love it here. A dream job for both of you, I'm sure. A dream opportunity for these females to play. I mean, you talk about the experience and the access to all the activities that they have in and around the school. How is this relationship going to be built stronger, not just on the ice, but with the school itself? And I mean, Harry, I get to talk with you about this because you know, student athletes is such a huge, you know, big word used these days, and promoting that identity to the sec post-secondary education, also the junior hockey. How are you looking forward to uh, taking these young uh, girls and making them into, uh, making them ready for after life in grade 12? Well, the thing that differs with uh, men and women's hockey is right after high school, you know, girls, you know, they pursue that college route where guys have a few years of junior to kind of, you know, you get a little bit of life experience, you get a couple of years to, to just kind of focus on the game as well. Uh, with girls, there's a quicker turnaround, you know, they, they finish high school and they have the opportunity to go, you know, to college. So you kind of have to get them ready a little sooner with than the guys, which is a challenge. But, you know, you find with girls, you know, in grade 12, they, you know, they tend to be a little bit more mature than the guys anyways. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's one of those things where it's going to be tough, but you know that, you know, if you, you give them a taste of what college life is like at these academies, you know, you're in dorms, you're going to school, you're on a schedule, and it, it prepares them for, you know, the next step a little sooner than, you know, just like Brad said, you know, you're playing kind of in the other associations where you're living at home, there's a lot of comfort, and then you go off to college and, you know, you're getting that first shock, you know, your first year, and that's, you know, where you're going to either make it or break it here. It gives you a couple of years to kind of ease into that lifestyle of university and college. Yeah, you, preparation is key, especially when it comes to young minds and skill yeah. sets. And I mean, I remember going through high school and having that preparation too. And I mean, Brad, you talk about uh, attracting players to come to this program. What is, what is the main attraction outside of just the ice time and the availability of that? How else do you attract uh, those young players to come to Pilot Mountain, Manitoba? Oh well, yeah, we're, we're first and foremost we're teaching hockey, um, and there's a lot of knowledge within the organization. Uh, Ernie and Rick and Rod Collins and uh, Harry and myself, a lot of years of experience of coaching. Uh, I think we can, you know, that part alone is enough to get kids here. But we're teaching them more than just hockey. But you know, we're teaching them off ice skills too. You know, time management. Um, there's so much stuff they have to do on their own that normally would maybe be done for them at home. Um, you know, so the kids leaving here, like Harry said, going into the college scenario for the next year or two years later, they're going to adapt way easier than that kid that was maybe living at home and not living in a situation like this. But 
Um, and Delaney Collins also is attached to the uh, program, so she's a Team Canada coach uh, for the female uh, U18. So that's Rod's daughter. So having that uh, the exposure there for the kids also helps, and the knowledge from her. She comes in and, and helps out with the uh, practices throughout the years. All right, Delaney was here last month with you guys, correct? At the beginning, yeah. second weekend of April, doing a, a skills camp, correct? Yeah. How did that go? Was there a lot of uh, was there outside players that were involved? How many players were invited to that and attended? There was quite a few invited. Actually, yeah. it was a well attended camp. How many girls were here total? There was. We had probably about twenty, maybe. Between. There was a mid mid twenties, twenty five girls here, and uh, some a lot were, you know, haven't been here before maybe never really heard of the program either so um, you know that gets those girls in to see what we're all about um, small town you know we're just kind of stuck in the middle of, of nowhere out here but running a great program and that's exactly it. you talk about the uniqueness you, you you drive through pilot mountain manitoba and you see this huge massive rink and you think about okay what could be housed in such a place and it's the beauty of the beast, basically, because it's such a great hockey academy on both the male and the female side, and how important it is to a small community. I mean, we had both teams talking today about their community involvement and how they're all known, well known within the community, and they're all known by their first name and how they were known before they were even introduced to any of their teachers. It's such an amazing feeling uh, and the uniqueness of it all. Harry, I mean, you being the first year next year, how do you look to prepare your, the players that are coming back from next year, or from last year, sorry, but also for next year and being leaders for the rest of the team? Well, I mean, being that it was their first year, um, you know, all of them kind of got that first experience together. So coming back, um, like the girls were saying, like they played two days in. So you're getting to learn names and everything, you know, and your line mates and right on the fly. Now with that familiarity, you know, we'll have a good core. And then, you know, the unknown of, you know, okay, where's the grocery store? Where's the hangout? You know, these girls will be able to get the new girls adapted even faster than the whole team was last year. And I think, you know, we're going to start off next year with a tournament that first week, the same tournament, uh, and we're going to be that much better. I mean, I, I got filled in on, on how they did, and, you know, just the preparation as, the, as a program is going to be, you know, 10 times better. And I think we're going to have more success early on next year. Uh, we'll have a better base and then you know continue to grow and just make it easier to attract new players because you always have that carryover so then you kind of get the ball rolling and then you know that's when the program is going to really start to take off and become bigger and bigger. Absolutely. We talked earlier with Rod about the scheduling. Has your schedule been released yet for the upcoming year and if so are there any local tournaments at all or is it still everything that's out in the west coast and in the states? Uh, we have our local our our own showcase, which all the teams from the league will come here for, and it's in February. Um, really? There is some local Pembina tournaments Valley. that we go to, Pema Valley, uh, their AAA, their, their tournament. I think it's usually Thanksgiving. Um, and then we were in Central Plains tournament. There is a few local tournaments we try and get into throughout the year, but um, there's one down at Shattuck, so we we do some traveling. We're not we're not scared of driving. We we've done a lot of it last year, so you know it's it is what it is. Especially living in a town, Pilot Mountain, you know, there's not a lot of local high end showcase tournaments to get right. into. So we, we have to we have to travel. Sure. Obviously, going to, did you go to Shattuck this year? Yeah. yeah. How impressive is that program, and how what do you take from a program like Shattuck and say? man, that was a really great thing they did. How do we implement it here at Pilot Mountain? Or do you just say, you know what, we're our own animal here, we're going to do our own thing our own way? Well, that's, I think it, that's exactly, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, we're, we're making it our own, I think. Uh, yeah, we look at other academies and see how they're done, but there's nobody out, out there that is about the same as us. Like maybe Wilcox, you know, bringing kids in, living in dorms and stuff. Other than that, you don't have we're yeah we're unique and we want to stay that way and you know eventually i think we can get to that level of the shattuck name um, and get some good high-end players coming out of here but it's going to take some work and take some time and we just got to keep doing what we're doing and keep attracting some players and, 
You never know. You never know. And you mentioned a great group of gentlemen who have the passion and the leadership and the experience on and off the ice. So I think there's going to be great things to come. I want to thank you, gentlemen, Harry and Brad, for joining us today on the show and really bringing Pilot Mountain to the forefront, especially with this hockey academy. I think we talk about all the programs. There's some of the programs out there in Canada and the United States. And, I mean, only its third year of inception. And now the second year for the female team, it only looks to grow. And I congratulate both of you for taking on this endeavor. And I mean, unique, one of a kind, making it your own thing. That's what Manitoba is really all about. So congratulations and thank you, gentlemen, both. Thank you. Thank you. Are you looking for a career in the salon industry? Check out Aveda Institute Winnipeg in the exchange. What sets us apart is our student mentorship program, 95% placement rate after graduation, real-world salon experience, and network of 7,000 salons and spas. You will learn creative cut and coloring, latest trends and techniques, social media marketing, fashion shows, photo shoots, and more. Now accepting applications for 2018, so check us out and book your tour today. Aveda Institute Winnipeg, hair school the way it should be. We're here still with the Manitoba show. We were able to track down counselor Doug Collins related to the other Mr. Collins we had earlier. Doug, we talked to the players, we talked to the coaching staff. What does Pilot Mound Hockey Academy mean to the town of Pilot Mound? Oh, it, it brings an uh, extra boost, particularly to our school. Uh, it's an added teacher and a half to two teachers because you're bringing 40 more students in. Uh, it's a extra boost to our grocery stores, to our all our little uh, stores that require services. Uh, you know, the kids all go there and they use it, whether no matter what if they're after. You know, so yeah. it, that's a, it's a great boost that way. Plus, it uh, makes us more aware uh, of what kids want and what our community needs to present to them. And that is one thing that the players indicated when we were interviewing both the female and male hockey teams is the involvement in the community and how well the community supports this team. What is it like having 40 players from not just you know local areas but from all over North America in such a small town and how exciting is it is to have an, an opportunity like this in Pilot Mount? Well it, it's yeah, actually it really is it's a it's very exciting. Uh, it's a, uh, also, it takes a lot of management. It takes a lot of uh, organization to keep the kids busy when they're not involved in the ice and in school. Uh, it's all part of it. But being involved in the community, they do everything from volunteer to the, at the personal care home to volunteering at the rink. Uh, the kids help here at the dorm some uh, when they can. They're, they have certain chores that they have to do. Uh, this is all part of a character builder that we think that we can portray to those kids uh, and they can carry on in life. You know, it's, it's something they're not going to learn at home because maybe mom and dad are doing it for them. Here, they got to do it themselves, some of them. That's a huge part of growing up. It's the life lessons off the rink that are important to not only themselves individually but to the community itself. How do you uh, foresee or how do you feel the vision of this hockey academy for this town to improve and progress over the next coming years? Well, I see us going to at least another team. Uh, I see us maybe going pursuing uh, uh, some other avenues as, as far as uh, hockey in Asia is concerned. I can see a, there's going to be an opportunity there. Uh, the big problem is to get housing, get facilities to accommodate these kids um, and get coaching staff, all the things in place. You just can't, you got to take small steps before you can make the big ones. Sure. And that's exactly what we're doing here. But our next step will be a, a third team, which will probably will be prep, uh, varsity prep, or uh, varsity, and then uh, prep girls teams. And then maybe down the road we'll have a U15 as well. So is the school going to be able to support another 60 students, or is it we going to have to see a bigger school being here well, too? Well, I, I think they can. Uh, you know, and that's down the road. It's going to be, we're projecting two or three years. Like we're going to build a permanent uh, dorm facility. I think maybe you saw the plans over there. So it'll come. It, that permanent one will be for three players of 22 players each, plus dorm parent rooms, plus huge uh, kitchen, study hall. All that will be involved in it. You know, it's going to be a 
we'll make we'll try to make it as first class as we can for a small town. Absolutely. Yeah. So how does Pilot Mound? Uh, obviously, they enjoy the hockey academy here. How exciting? How fun is it to see them down the street and just seeing the kids being known by first name? And you wouldn't see that in a larger city anywhere else. And how like do the kids? Thoroughly and like they have to be enjoying life here, being stars off the ice and on the ice. Uh, they they do. I, I think that's something that uh, you just kind of uh, watch and you enjoy that part of them growing up and being part of the community. But uh, you watch them going to school. You watch them walking down the street and they go by a certain businesses, no matter what it is, the bank or the hardware store or the grocery store or whatever it is, uh, the flower shop and the residents. Uh, or the operators of those businesses, they'll see them and they'll say hi to them and, and they know a lot of them by first name basis because that's the way it is. The kids get involved in certain things and you know, and, it, and I think you're right. They don't see, you'll never see that in a, in a uh, big city. I mean, I don't care where it is. And we have, there's disadvantages of being in the rural area like this. There's also advantages. And the advantages I think are gonna outweigh the disadvantages because uh, you don't have the big box stores that can go to and all those kind of things. But we also offer certain things, uh, taking them out to the valley, taking them to the lakes, taking them for walks in the Pemina Valley, all those kind of things that I think, you know, they they wouldn't get in the city, you know. So I think that's that's very important as part of a character builder for them. Right on. So life skills, life lessons off the ice as well as on the ice. Doug, thanks for joining yeah. us. And lastly, I'm going to ask you this quick question. as a politician, if you're going to call yourself that, or a councillor, you're in a small yeah. town. How would you envision? I mean, the infrastructure needs to be improved, but on the ice, do you have a chance to see the players? Do you do you see them progress? Do you have a chance to support them that way? Oh, definitely. Like uh, this year, I went. My wife and I went to Penticton to watch the league championship. And uh, when I see these kids come in the fall, and I see them progress till they get to the playoffs in late March, it's amazing how they develop and even every one of the parents say to us they can't believe how their their kids get quicker faster and smarter on the ice I know that and that's what we're trying to do that's just the hockey aspect of it but you, you can really and then it makes you think well we're doing the right thing absolutely you yeah. know and having Delaney around isn't too bad for the female side right no that <laughs> She was probably, not because she's a relative of mine, but a, probably one of the best female hockey players ever laced him up. She's up there. I mean, I yeah. grew up with Jen Botterill the same way, and I feel yeah. exactly the same way as we do with Delaney here in Pilot Mound. So thank you very much yeah. for joining with us, and I really appreciate seeing the community aspect of it and the uniqueness that Pilot Mound Hockey Academy brings to such a small town. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a big undertaking for us. It, it really is a, a community of... 700 plus people uh, and that, the reason we went to dorms because we don't have enough people to accommodate billets but it, uh, I, I think in the long run we're going to be very proud of we, what we do and, and we develop hockey players and if we can make these kids get a good education and get the odd one to go through to the show, we've done what we want to do. That's awesome. Thanks yeah. very much Doug. You bet. Thank right you. On. Theo Tucker like saying thanks for joining us here on the Manitoba Show. Look forward to upcoming unique areas, businesses, all in the Manitoba area. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Take care.